Christ is in our midst. Today, on Saturday, March 2nd, we commemorate St. Hesychius the Martyr, our Holy Father, St. Nicholas Panas, St. Joachim of Atopedi, who was given the name Papulakis, St. Andronikos and Athanasia the Martyrs. Regarding the martyr Hesychius, the Holy Martyr Hesychius lived during the reign of King Maximian in 302. He was the first and the leader in the royal palace and the senate because he was a magist magistranius by office. When Maximian ordered that all Christians who were royal soldiers ought to be deprived of their belts, which were a sign of the royal merit, and live as civilians and without honor, many Christians preferred to live without any outward honor due to this illegal order, then turn to be honored, rather than to be honored and lose their soul. So in other words, they prefer the honor of heaven rather than the, heaven, the honor of earth. Saint Hezekiah was numbered with these Christians as well. When the king heard it, he ordered that the saint ought to be stripped of the expensive clothes which he used to wear and be dressed with a shabby mantle without sleeves, woven from hair, and to be as disgraced and disdained as to consort with women. When this had been carried out, the king invited him and asked him, Aren't you ashamed, Hezekiah, that you lost the honor and office of Magistranius, and that you have been debased to this kind of life? Or maybe you don't know that the Christians, whose way of life you preferred, have no power to restore you to your previous great honor and office. The saint replied, Your honor, O king, is temporary, but the honor and glory which Christ gives is eternal without end. Because of these words, the king got angry and ordered his men to tie a great millstone around the saint's neck and then to throw him into the middle of the river Orontes, which lies in Coela, Syria, and which is commonly called Orange. Thus the blessed man received the crown of martyrdom from the Lord. Your martyr, O Lord, in his courageous contest for you, received as the prize the crowns of incorruption and life from you, our immortal God. For since he possessed your strength, he cast down the tyrants and wholly destroyed the demon's strengthless presumption. O Christ God, by his prayer, save our souls, since you are merciful. Regarding our Holy Father, St. Nicholas Planas, St. Nicholas Planas was born in 1851 on the island of Naxos in Greece. He was married as a teenager and soon after ordained to the diaconate and then the priesthood. His wife reposed soon after and so he assumed the burden of being a widowed father and a parish priest. He was known for his zeal in serving the liturgy, especially his habit of serving the divine liturgy every day for 50 years. Many altar boys would see him radiating light or raised off the ground while serving the liturgy. Being so revered by his parishioners, he became known as Papa, which is an affectionate term for a parish priest. Papa Nicholas reposed in 1932 and was formally canonized as a saint in 1992. There is also a tradition that says that St. Nicholas Planas uh, was given lists of names. So you know those names of lists that you give to the priest, the living and the dead, that he never threw any of them out. And so every single day for those 50 years that he did liturgy, he would read those names, often taking hours to get through them because he felt it was so important to pray for the living and the dead of the souls entrusted to him. From St. Paul's first letter to Timothy, Timothy, my son, aim at righteousness, godliness, faith, love, steadfastness, gentleness. These are aspects, fruits of the Holy Spirit. Fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called when you made the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. This is the confession of Timothy's priesthood. He has been called to be a warrior for Christ. In the presence of God, who gives life to all things, and of Christ Jesus, who in his testimony before Pontius Pilate made the good confession, I charge you to keep the commandment unstained and free from reproach until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. And this will be made manifest at the proper time by the blessed and only Sovereign and King of Kings and Lord of Lords, who alone has immortality and dwells in unapproachable light, whom no man has ever seen or can see, to him be honor and eternal dominion. Amen. So in other words, for the clergy, they are entrusted with the great trust, the trust of the bread of life, of the church. And so it will be called on them on the dread day of judgment by Christ our God. From the Gospel according to St. Luke, the Lord said to his disciples, Beware of the scribes who like to go about in long robes and love salutations in the marketplaces and the best seats in the synagogues and the places of honor at feast, who devour widows' houses and for pretense make long prayers 
So in other words, these are the people, they, the lawyers, uh, that make themselves seem more righteous than they actually are. They love wearing rich, gallant robes. They want to sit in the best places. And we see this throughout society. Uh, this is true of lay people and clergy, where people want to put on the garbs of being famous, being um, high in society. And, and so in order to make it seem like they're doing a good thing, they'll say loud, long prayers, and it sounds very pretty, but ultimately it's empty. They will receive the greater condemnation. He looked up and saw the rich putting their gifts into the treasury. And he saw a poor, poor widow put in two copper coins. And he said, truly I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all of them. For they all contributed out of their abundance but she, out of her poverty, put in all the living that she had. Having said this, he proclaimed, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. This is to show us how our stewardship should be. Our stewardship should pinch a little bit. It should be a sacrifice. If I'm just giving a penny here or a penny there, uh, proportionally to what I have, that's not real stewardship, and that's not really helping anybody. But when we actually tithe, when we actually give a percentage of our gifts, then this is something that is actually meritorious. This is something that God will look at and say, yes, good and faithful servant, this was good of what you did, as opposed to a pittance that we do just for the idea of showing, oh, that's what I am. So for example, the let's say the average um, salary in uh, Chicagoland is $60,000. Uh, Ten percent of that would be $6,000. Now, the, uh, the person that's giving $6,000 in stewardship in most Greek Orthodox churches is far and in between. Um, and they would be considered like the mega, mega stewards. But the poverty line is about 30000 If someone gave 10% of 30000 that would be $3,000. If our rich people were giving $3,000, they would be considered, oh, look at me and just roll out the red carpet because I'm giving the big bucks. When the reality is that's 10% of poverty's level. That is not the great level. We are not giving out of what we should be giving, but we're giving a pittance. And this is why we need to try to move towards the idea of tithing, to understand the nature of what it means to actually give in proportion this is what Jesus Christ says, he, he with ears to hear, let him hear, because we need to give proportionality, not just the idea of a static gift. So this is why it's important for us to pay attention to how we interact with God and his church. I hope that you've enjoyed today's spiritual calisthenics. Have a blessed and wonderful day.